Our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would go into the cave in the darkness at night meditating, contemplating on the creation, contemplating on the creator. Because even before prophethood came to our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam already had that natural instinct in his heart to worship that one Lord. And then suddenly out of nowhere, a supernatural being comes to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and grabs the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and presses his chest and says, Iqra. And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, I can't read. Angel Jibreel again grabbed him and he pressed his chest and he said, Iqra. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam again replied, I can't read. Angel, Angel Jibreel again get, grabbed him, grabbed him and pressed his chest and he said, Iqra. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam again said, I can't read. And then the first revelation, the most beautiful words, the best of words, the most perfect of words were revealed to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaqo, khalaqo al-insana min alaqo. Iqra wa rabbuka al-akram, alladhi allama bilqalam. The Prophet ﷺ was terrified. He came back hurriedly to Khadija radiallahu anha. He came back and he told Khadija radiallahu anha, Zammiluni, Zammiluni. Cover me, cover me. Covered our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And she asked, what's wrong? What happened? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and narrated that incident to Khadija radiallahu anha that this, this being came out of nowhere and said, Iqra, read. And she took an oath on Allah Azza wa Jal. And she said that the Lord will never do this to you. You protect the ties of kinship. You always speak the truth. You bear the burden of those who are helpless. You help those people who are destitute. Allah Azza wa Jal will never shame you like this. The Prophet ﷺ was then a bit consoled. Khadija radiallahu anha had a cousin by the name of Waraka ibn Nawfal. Waraka was told of this incident by our Prophet Muhammad ﷺ and Waraka ibn Nawfal said that this is the same namus, meaning the same scripture that was given to the Prophet Musa ﷺ. And the Prophet ﷺ then further inquired about this. And Waraka ibn Nawfal told our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that if I had been healthy and young, I would have helped you through the trials and the tribulations when people will abandon you and throw you out. Our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, people will throw me out? Every Prophet that came with this message, the people rejected him and threw him out. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then understood that this was a revelation from Allah azza wa jal. The Prophet وسلم, then again, he used to go back to the Ghar, Gharu Hira and he would wait for this revelation again. But the Prophet وسلم, did not get any revelation for some time. Then one day again, after a brief period had passed, the Prophet وسلم, went to Gharu Hira and again he saw the angel Jibreel. وسلم. You know, he got terrified. Although he was waiting earnestly and eagerly for the next revelation, he was terrified because it was this supernatural being an angel, something new. The Prophet وسلم, again came back, again told Khadija radiallahu anha to wrap him with, with the blankets. And then the revelation came to Prophet Muhammad وسلم, whilst he was wrapped. Ya ayyuhal muddathir, O oh you who are wrapped in blankets, qum fa'anthir, stand up and warn the people. Wa rabbaka fakabbir, and your Lord, proclaim his greatness. وَثِيَابَكَ فَطَهِّرْ And purify your garments. وَالرُّجْزَ فَهْجُرْ And stay away from all types of impurity, meaning associating partners with Allah Azza wa Jal and other things. 
So then after the second revelation, then the revelation started to come at frequent intervals to our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And one day, Angel Jibril came to him. He performed wudu. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also performed wudu. Then the Angel Jibril, he led the prayers and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was led in prayers by Angel Jibril Alaihi Wasallam. Now Khadija radiallahu anha, as soon as she heard the message from the beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, from her husband, she accepted the message straight away because she knew that this is the truth. Abu Bakr radiallahu anha, who was the closest friend of our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he heard this message, he accepted the message straight away. Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu, who was the cousin of our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he heard the message, he accepted the message straight away. These were the people who accepted the message on the first day when the Prophet ﷺ got the message from Allah All his family members knew him. He was known as a Sadiqul Amin, the truthful one and the one who keeps his trust. In the initial period, Abu Bakr anhu helped our beloved Prophet Muhammad ﷺ a lot. He helped with his wealth. Abu Bakr anhu was a very wealthy person. He was one of the greats amongst the Quraysh. He helped our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in spreading this message with his finances, with his, with his circle of friends. And it was through his circle of friends that the next batch of Muslims eventually accepted Islam. And some of those prominent Sahaba were Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anhu, Talha ibn Ubaidillah, Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqas, Abdul Rahman ibn Awf, Zubair ibn al-Awwam radiallahu anhum. And they accepted Islam straight away on the spot. Fatima radiallahu anha, the sister of Umar radiallahu anha, she was also one of the first to accept Islam. Her husband, Sa'id ibn Zayd radiallahu anhu, was also one of the first to accept Islam. Ja'far ibn Abi Talib was the next batch of Muslims to accept Islam. And Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, one of the greatest scholars of this ummah, was amongst the first batch of Muslims. Initially, when the message and the revelation came, they would go out to the outskirts of Mecca to pray. They wouldn't pray openly because they would be rebuked. And three years went silently in this manner. Once when our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was praying, Abu Talib happened to pass by the mountains and he saw Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam praying. When he finished his prayer, he asked him, what, you, what are you doing? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam explained. And the Prophet ﷺ gave Abu Talib the message. Abu Talib said that, now I'm, I'm not going to leave the religion of my forefathers. But Ali ibn Abi Talib anhu was with his father Abu Talib. He told him, stay in the company of Muhammad and do what he says. He will always guide you to what is right. And Abu Talib, even though he disbelieved because of his ego and because of his pride, he knew that what Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa came with was the right message. After three years had passed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He revealed to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa instructed him to preach openly. Allah azza wa says in Surah Al-Hijr, فَاصْدَعْ بِمَا تُؤْمَرْ وَأَعْرِضْ عَنِ الْمُشْرِكِينَ That preach openly that which you have been commanded and turn your face away from those who disbelieve, from those who associate partners with Allah Azza wa Jal. So Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went and climbed Mount Safa. He called, he gathered the Quraysh and he said that if I were to tell you that there is an army behind this mountain, would you believe me? Everyone said, yes, yes, yes. Of course, you are, you are Sadiq al Amin. Then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, I have come with something more serious. And the Prophet ﷺ warned them about their wrong ways and warned them about doing things against Tawheed. That say, La ilaha illallah, there's none worthy of worship except Allah Azza wa Jal, and you will be successful. Abu Lahab, who was amongst the crowd, he said, Woe be to you. Is this why you gathered us here? He couldn't tolerate this. And he went and confronted our beloved Prophet Muhammad. ﷺ. Next came the revelation from Allah Azza wa Jal to give this message to the near relatives. And he said that warn your relatives, those who are closest to you, 
So our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam thought of a plan. And he told Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu to arrange a party. Call everyone for some food. And when everyone came, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was about to speak. But Abu Lahab interjected and he threw him off topic. And this message could not be delivered at that particular party. So after this incident, our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam again went to Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu and he told him again, you know, arrange another party. Let's call everyone together. And when everyone gathered, our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave this message. Told them not to worship anyone other than Allah azza wa jal. And not surprisingly, none of them took this kindly. And they all rejected the message. One of the reasons why the Quraysh could not accept this message very kindly was because the Quraysh amongst the Arabs and amongst other people were known to have these idols. So the idols in Mecca were a pla was a place where everyone from around Mecca and from outside, they would come to Mecca to worship these idols. And once, you know, these idols are destroyed because of the message, La ilaha illallah, then what would happen to their business? What would happen to people coming and, you know, visiting Mecca? So this was one of the reasons why our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa was rejected at first. But of course, the power of this message was too great. So when this instruction was given to our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa to preach openly, then our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa established a markaz, established a center, a center for teaching, a center for converts, a center for reverts. And this was known as Dar Arqam. Now, of course, when this message became open, then that's when the trouble started. How they sacrificed for Allah Azza wa Jal. Bilal radiallahu anhu, so close in Jannah to our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa But why was this honor given to him? And then Umayyah bin Khalaf would put him on the sand, would, have, would put a bada on his stomach, and he would just stay there. But what would Bilal radiallahu anhu say? Ahad. Ahad, Ahad, Ahad. It is because of this sacrifice that Bilal radiallahu anhu was given such a high, a high honor. Hammar ibn Yasir radiallahu anhu. He had his father by the name of Yasir radiallahu anhu and his mother's name was Sumayya radiallahu anha. His parents saw the beauty of Islam and they accepted Islam straight away. They were by Abu Jahal until Ammar ibn Yasir radiallahu anhu's mother Sumayya radiallahu anha was tired by Abu Jahl and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told them have patience the family of Yasir for verily your abode is Jannah but these people sacrificed for the deen of Allah azza wa jal and that is why this deen has come to us today because of their sacrifice Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anhu one of the prominent sahaba and he had a lot of wealth they were also persecuted by the Quraysh Abu Dhar radiallahu anhu was until he was unconscious. Until Abbas ibn Abdul Muttalib, the uncle of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa who was not a Muslim at that time, he came and he passed by the person who was persecuting Abu Dhar Ghifari radiallahu an. And he said that leave him. He is from the Banu Ghifar tribe. And the Banu Ghifar are situated in a place which is very strategic for our trade. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu. One of the great scholars of this ummah, he was beaten until he was unconscious. Khabbab ibn al-Arat radiallahu anhu. These people were given that strength by Allah azza wa jal to stay firm. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was also persecuted. The reason was because he was the nephew of Abu Talib. And Abu Talib was one of the greats, one of the luminaries of the Quraysh. And it was through his protection that our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa got a bit of protection. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa was once praying near the Kaaba. Abu Jahal happened to pass by, started jeering at him, started laughing at our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Who wants to go and pick up the intestines of that camel and the insides of that camel and put it on Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa One person, one disbeliever, he went and he took this, the bile and the intestines of the camel 
and he came and dropped it on the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam while she was praying. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam continued to pray. Fatima radiyallahu anha, who was the daughter of the, daughter of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, she came and had to take these intestines and the insides of the camel off the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam bore all this, but they never gave up. And the Quraysh saw this and they said, "We have to make a plan." So they sent a person by the name of Utbah ibn Rabi'ah to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Is it money that you want? And you will have more money than everyone from amongst us. If it is a position that you want, we will make you our ruler. If it is a woman that you want, we will get the best woman, the most beautiful woman from the best lineage, from the best tribe, and we will marry her to you. And if you want all of this simultaneously, then even that we are ready to do for you. But please leave this message. Let us stick to this religion of our forefathers of worshiping the idols. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said and replied to Utbah ibn Rabi'a and he said that I, I will not stop. Even though they rejected the message of Islam, they knew that what the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said and what he would say was the truth because he was of upright character. And if he made dua against them, they were fearful of this. So he said, oh, be quiet, please, please. He put his mouth over the mouth of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he quickly came back to the Quraysh. And they asked him, what happened? So he said, no, he, 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 he didn't accept. So they decided to go through a different route. And that was through Abu Talib, his uncle. And Utbah, Shayba, Abu Jahl came to Abu Talib and they made him the same offer. They told him, can you please speak to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa you know, tell him like, if he wants something from this world, if he has any desires, we are ready to give him anything. But just tell him to please leave this message. Leave this worshipping one Allah. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa rejects their offer. Abu Jahl gets up and starts confronting the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and confronts Abu Talib as well. Abu Talib tells the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and pleads to him, I'm one of the chiefs of Mecca, but I'm growing old now. I can't protect you anymore the way that I used to protect you previously. You know, please, I mean, if you can, just leave this, you know. Just let's, let's stay in peace. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that if you put the sun in my right hand and the moon in my left hand, I, will, I cannot leave this message. But later on, Abu Talib reassured our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that I will support you until my death. Now, things started to get very hard for the Muslims. So the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave permission to the Muslims to migrate to Abyssinia. And in the first caravan that migrated to Abyssinia from amongst the Muslims, there were 11 men and four women. And out of those people, the most prominent amongst them was Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anhu and his wife and the daughter of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ruqayya radiyallahu anha. Uthman ibn Mad'un, Zubair ibn al-Awwam was also one of those Sahaba who migrated to Abyssinia. They sought refuge there. And then after a while they heard rumors that, you know, the, the, this persecution is subsiding. And so some of them started coming back. And then they realized on the way that, you know, this news was just rumors. It wasn't true. In fact, things were getting much worse for the Sahaba and those who accepted Islam. And when they returned, they gathered, gathered some of the other Sahaba who were having a hard time living there in Mecca and they went and migrated to Abyssinia. This is known as the second migration. And this all happened in the fifth year of Hijrah. In the second migration, there were approximately 100 people. Now, the Quraysh said that, I mean, the, all, all of these people are going and migrating to uh, uh, Abyssinia they will regroup there and come back with a vengeance. They were very fearful of that. Now they said that we have to somehow, you know, bring them back. So they sent Amr ibn al-As and Abdullah ibn Rabi'ah to Abyssinia to speak to Najashi. They told him that, you know, we had some slaves and they ran away and they started this new religion of theirs and, you know, we have come to reclaim them. So Najashi said, I have to listen to the other party first. So then these Muslims were called to the court of an Najashi. And Ja'far ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu was made the spokesperson. 
a gist of what he said was, we were a people who used to worship idols. We were a people who were engrossed in all this evil. We were a people who were drinking. We were a people who lied, who deceived. And then there came a prophet sent by Allah Azza wa Jal, who told us to speak the truth, who told us to respect women. So when an Najashi heard this, he said that, yes, what you have said is you know, correct. But then, you know, Amr ibn al-As, and they told him that these people reject Jesus. An Najashi called Ja'far ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu and he said, you know, what do you say about this? So he said that we say that, uh, you know, Isa alayhi salam, he was a prophet and a slave of Allah azza wa jal, and he was not the son of God. And an Najashi said that this is the same that is in our scriptures as well. And an Najashi then said, can you recite something from what Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has brought to you? And then Ja'far ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu recited a few verses from you know, Surah Maryam and Najashi, you know, when he heard these beautiful words of Allah Azza wa Jal, you know, he just fell into tears. He was a disbeliever at that time and later on he accepted Islam. And the Quraysh, they have come with some gifts for Najashi. But Najashi said, take your gifts back as well. And this was like a slap in their face. He told the Muslims, you can live here as long as you want under my protection. The next two incidences which I will mention are at the early stage of Islam. And the first was the acceptance of Islam by Hamza radiallahu anhu, who was the beloved uncle of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam once was, you know, passing by. And Abu Jahl, he came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he, he started taunting him. And eventually he threw a rock at his, uh, on his head. The Prophet ﷺ did not retaliate in any way. Now Hamza radiallahu anhu, he used to go hunting. He was one of the bravest men. No one would dare mess with him. Hamza radiallahu anhu, when he came back, one of the slave girls, she told Hamza radiallahu anhu of this incident. He got really angry. He said, no, this is not acceptable. So he went to Abu Jahl. He was sitting with his cronies. He hit him on his head with a bow and he injured him. His cronies got up, started, you know, they wanted to fight back. Abu Jahl told them, you know, wait, wait. And he said that it is actually my bad. I'm the one who heard the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and I shouldn't have done that. And if he hadn't come to take revenge, then he would, he would have been dishonored. But Hamza radiallahu anhu, then he got up from there and he went back to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that, I'm not happy with what you have done. And then he said, I'll only be happy if you accept the message of Islam. Hamza radiallahu anhu there and then accepted La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. That brought a lot of confidence in the heart of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and the Muslims. He was one of the major players. No one would dare take, or, take him on in a fight. And when he accepted Islam, they rejoiced. They felt more, you know, stronger. Another great that accepted Islam was Umar radiallahu anhu. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Sahaba exclaimed loudly, Allahu Akbar, they were so happy. Umar Radiallahu Anhu, he got up after accepting Islam and he went straight to Abu Jahl's house. Abu Jahl asked, why have you come here? And he said, I've just accepted Islam. What are you going to do about it? You know? Now when they saw this, these two greats have accepted Islam, it has brought strength to the Muslims. And they said, we'll boycott the Muslims. We'll boycott not the Muslims, but Banu Hashim and Banu Abdul Muttalib. These two tribes were boycotted by the rest of the Quraysh. They weren't given any food, they weren't given anything. And this went for a period of three years. They stayed on the outskirts of Mecca. In fact, many times they were made to eat leaves from the trees because they did not, they did not have any other food. And they were living in these harsh conditions. Subhanallah, this was a very tough time for the Muslims. And eventually, Zuhair ibn Umayyah and Mut'im ibn Adi, who so that these people, you know, they are starving and, you know, it's, it's a very sad plight of these people. We have to end this boycott. And he said that we'll make a plan, we'll gather all the other chiefs and we'll, you know, uh, end this boycott. And the Prophet ﷺ was foretold by Allah Azza wa Jal that the contract on which this boycott was written, which was stuck to the Kaaba, it was eaten by the, uh, by the termites, except the words where Allah was written. And when the Quraysh came to know about this, then the chief said, okay, if it is destroyed, then we will end this boycott. And eventually this is how the boycott ended. And Abu Talib got sick during this period. And he passed away eventually in the 10th year after the prophethood. 
And when Abu Talib passed away, then his final support in terms of, you know, political support was lost. Soon after, Khadija radiallahu anha also passed away. A Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had lost two of his strong, staunch supporters. A Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam felt down, but he was not defeated whatsoever. You know, after the boycott was ended, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam continued to give this da'wah to the people that came from outside, in, uh, outside Makkah into Makkah as well. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then decided to go to Ta'if. When he went to Ta'if, he went to the Banu Thaqif and he met two clans on the way, he met two tribes on the way and he gave them da'wah as well and they did not accept. They laughed at him. When he was going back, the chiefs, they tried to stir up some mischief and they told the slaves and the, you know, the, the children and the riffraff of the community to leave the religion of our forefathers. So then they decided to pelt the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was bleeding from head to toe. An angel Jibreel at that moment came to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Ta'if was based in between two mountains and Jibreel alayhi sallam told the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam if you want I will crush this Ta'if, this city of Ta'if in between these two mountains. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said don't do that. For if these people don't accept Islam maybe their progeny will. And that is what eventually happened. He was a mercy for the whole universe. Rahmatul lil alameen. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then, he came back to Makkah and he was hurt. And in this state, where he was facing this suffering, where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had to go through this hardship, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was being prepared by Allah azza wa jal for the greatest journey. That is the journey of Isra and the Mi'raj. 